You can do this with custard powder. <laughs> Honestly, you get enormous flames because that. If you shrunk us down into a powder, we too would burst into flames. OK, so <laughs> just watch it on your old shrinking. So, OK, so that's what it's like when you make things small, different things happen. But what is this world of the small that I'm talking about? And I want to just show you, because I've got a little microscope here, and I want to introduce you to this world of the small if you've not seen it before. Basically, anything you put it on, you can see. So here's the back of my hand. Oh, it's not so bad, is it? Here it goes. <laughs> I've seen it many times. I know it really well. Um, here's, here's, if you think that's uh, if you wait till you see this, this is what my face looks like. <laughs> Come on, this is me. I'm in the room. <laughs> let's get off me. I'm so self-centered, aren't I? All right, let's get my shirt. Look, even something as simple as a button at this scale looks amazing, doesn't it? Wow, and this guy, Ted Baker, has obviously broken into my house and written his name on my buttons without me knowing. <laughs> You've got to check these things with your microscope all times. OK, look, so it's a, it's a wonderful place, this microstructure. So why don't we play a game? I'm going to show you the microstructure of some household objects, which you know very well, and, but you've probably never seen them at the scale, and you have to guess what they are. How about that? OK, so here's number one. Are you up for this? All right, just say nothing if you are. Okay. All right, here, what's this? That was the cloth. What's this? Go on, shout it out. Sponge. OK, you guys are good. All right, I, th I thought it was going to be, it wasn't, isn't it beautiful, though, a sponge? Let me just show you that again, because I'm quite proud of it. Isn't that beautiful? Now, all right, here's another one. What's this? Who, what's this? Ooh. Some sort of bubbles in some sort of surface. That's a kind of, what's that, a pigment? So what is this? Anyone? Uh, a cup. Fantastic. Brilliant. This is a teacup, a beautiful porcelain teacup. And those bubbles are tiny microscopic bubbles in the glaze of the cup. Now, the Chinese have spent 2,000 years perfecting that effect to give it a really beautiful luminescent feel. All right. So if you can understand these microstructures and you can change them, you can do fantastic things. They don't just look beautiful down here. The physics that dominates at the different scales changes everything about the material. So let's try and understand how physics changes with scale. And I want to do this with a game, <laughs> one of my favorite games. And I've got a guest to play it with. All right. Yes. <laughs> so tell, me, tell us a bit about yourself. What's your name? Jamal Anderson. And, and what are your, your basketball credentials? Uh, I play for the professional team Essex Pirates and Great Britain under 20s. I just wonder if you can do us a favour. Can you do a penalty shot? I know this is really under lots of pressure. The TV cameras are expecting all and You're not going to make it, I'm sure, but could you give it a go? Oh! <laughs> That's impressive. OK, now look, I'm going to change the game because I feel like I'm at a disadvantage. What, what I'm going to do is we've made the, the hoop smaller and we've made the ball smaller. Now, that should, in a way, make it easier for you, shouldn't you? Shouldn't it? So can you try and shoot a penalty now with the smaller ball? And actually, the hoop isn't that much smaller. It's lower. I mean, have a go. Oh, close. You're good. <laughs> All right, now let's make an even smaller one. Now, I'm going to let you go a bit closer than here. But actually, literally, it's downhill all the way from your height, isn't it? And that should be peasy for you. And look, a tiny little ball. But it's not that tiny. It's important. You should be like, come on, let's have a go at this. Oh. Well, look, thank you very much. That was really unfair of me, wasn't it, really? Because. I, you know, he's used to playing with a certain size ball, but, but what we were doing is changing the size of the game, and we were changing the relative magnitude of two forces. One is gravity. So as the ball got smaller, gravity had less and less. It was, it was exerting a smaller and smaller force on it. And the other was air resistance. So as the ball got smaller and smaller and smaller, it, its relative area got larger. So air resistance became a much bigger factor. And of course, it's very hard to calculate it when, when someone springs that on you. Um, but this is, this is, in general, what happens in life. As things get smaller, different physics dominates, and it changes the game. And I've got, actually, here, um, I, didn't, I didn't want to mention this earlier because I thought you'd just hit me. 
but um, I've got a tiny microscopic basketball court down here. <laughs> Look at this. And I was pl trying to play earlier on this. It's really difficult. Look at those balls. Aren't they sweet? Here's a tiny needle, which you might use to sew. Look how, <laughs> look how, how small the balls are in comparison to the needle, even. If you see how they're just sticking to it? They're just sticking to the needle automatically, because at this scale, surfaces become very sticky. And if I try and bring them over to the court, the balls, and then I try and, all right, here we go. And I'm going to try and bounce them a bit. I can't even get them off the needle, and I, they, they just don't move, they won't roll. In fact, they won't bounce. It's just hopeless at this scale, because the balls won't bounce, because the surface forces, as soon as the ball hits it, it just sucks it down. And gravity is so small on those balls that it doesn't have, it's not exerting a great rebound force. So ants wouldn't be able to play basketball. Presumably, they have other games they play <laughs> with different rules. So if you, if, is it true then that if we could understand the different physics at different scales, we could make some kind of crazy, interesting technology? Well, yes. Let me give an example. Um, you know what it's like when you're going for a walk, and it's a summer's day in Britain. You put your coat on, of course, because <laughs> even though the sun's out, as soon as you put your coat on, the clouds come over, don't they? And the rain starts to fall, and then the wind gets up, doesn't it? And you're walking, but you're still enjoying yourself because it's a lovely day and you're getting a lot of fresh air. But then the leaves start falling on you, and but you're, it's okay because it's really good to clear the head, isn't it? On a good winter's day, and then you're like, okay, I've had enough. I've had enough. I've had enough. Some things stick to you in those moments of sort of weird summer walks. <laughs> Look, I've got one here sticking to me, and it's. It's these weird burrs, and they're kind of weirdly, amazingly sticky things, but they don't seem to have glue on them. So how do they work? If you're a material scientist, the first thing you do is you get your microscope out, and you have a look under the microscope at them. Can you see these weird little hooks? Isn't that amazing? And it's those tiny little hooks that, that get into your coat. And they're, what they're doing is they're latching on to a piece of, of, of wool or cotton, and that's the stickiness. And it's really very, very effective. And of course, these have evolved to stick to animals' coats and, and to spread the seed of the bird tree. But could we use that to make a sticky technology that would be useful? Perhaps we could. Well, a guy called Georges de Mistral, a Swiss engineer 50 years ago, had the same idea. So in case you're thinking of going out now and patenting this idea, you're too late. In fact, you're so late, I imagine that almost all of you, in fact, I guarantee all of you have a piece of this technology in your house and maybe, probably, on you now. Has anyone here got Velcro shoes? You have? All right. Do, do, would you mind coming up, just showing the shoes? OK, yeah. <laughs> Hello. Hello. What's your name? Rosie. Rosie. Oh, Rosie. Now, look, Rosie, this is going to sound like a weird thing to ask you, but could you take off your shoe and show it to me? Is that going to be a, dang is that going to be a danger zone or not? No. OK, brilliant. OK, fantastic. OK, do you mind just uh, have a look at it? And you can come and have a look at it, too, under the microscope. So here we go. Now, let's have a look at your Velcro shoes under the microscope, and let's see what we see. Well, we see a, r a range of hooks. Look at that. And that's just loops of nylon. Can you see how they've been made? They've been, nylon has been cut in the middle. Does that make sense? And so it's those little hooks that are mimicking the hooks of the burr. And the other side of the Velcro is here. And it's just, it's just a bit of um, kind of nylon mesh. See that? The other thing is it's kind of infinitely reusable. It kind of it records your life in a way, because it, kind of, it stays with you such a long time. For instance, it kind of it picks up bits about it. Look, look down here. See, look. That tells me that you used to have a boyfriend who had a red sweater. Am I right? <laughs> Am I? No. no. Well, look, thank you for being a great sport. And you can go back to <laughs> So we can stick small things, bags, shoes, and it's really convenient. But on, off, on, off. You don't even have to look at how it latches. But can we stick big things? What, how big can we get? 
Outside, we've got the biggest piece of Velcro we could find, and we've got two volunteers to help us try it out. What's this? 